So, I mean, more impetus to talk to you. You have a new album out that, that dropped, geez, almost a month ago now, right? Early June, uh, The New Dark Ages. Uh, that came together over the pandemic. You guys threw some stuff together. Do you have some stuff kind of on the back burner for that? Or how did yeah, that all come we were, about? Yeah, we were getting ready to go into the studio and record. Uh, literally, <laughs> the tickets were booked. Uh, and all of a sudden, you know, the the everything fell apart and we couldn't couldn't get together for two years oh cry me a river i didn't have to hang <laughs> around with those assholes <laughs> right. for two full years man uh and during it's funny we did have some songs written you know for the album that uh were already some of which we had to change because the world really took a took a turn there during the pandemic um so we readjusted and uh got back together and recorded them with as soon as we went in to record the session uh there was a massive snowstorm mm. and we lost power so all of the basic tracks for that record are recorded a with a toilet that won't flush in the other room so it's just <laughs> permeating smell of like the poop of six grown men <laughs> and then like the the just everything was gas powered on gen generators you know oh, wow. literally yeah gas powered rock and roll there for the basic tracks at least wow it's glamour it's glamour man it's glamour. That's, that is of the picture of glamour the, the toilet and all yeah. yeah you know you can smell when you listen to the album a little bit like it, it comes <laughs> through it's great scratch and sniff we've always wanted to do that. <laughs> well i mean you've got the graphic novel that came out with it too is that the first time you've put out a graphic novel with an album accompanied with an album it is yes it's the first time we've ever tried anything like that before um and gore i mean gore has a long history with comics uh the very early days of this band uh the people that started it were uh very influenced by uh, underground comics in particular and that the way that sort of you know the 60s underground comics are crumb and uh s clay wilson weirdo magazine robert and you know robert wilson uh all of that stuff uh translated into uh kind of punk rock comics right and that's where war really got its start so it was very good to be able to work with a real comic company put out a really, uh, I mean, we had done stuff with Dark Horse and Last Asp and other big comic companies before, but Z2 is the company that's putting it out. They really got their shit together. And <clears throat> it's definitely the first time we've had it coordinated with the release, at least as much as you can coordinate a release during the pandemic. I mean, that's right, why we, yeah. you know, we've got the digital version of the record out for three and a half or four months before the CDs and records drop. But mm -hmm. yep. supply chain. I hate it when so it drop yes it dropped <laughs> drop. sounds like so, somebody dropped a turd yeah. <laughs> so with that said was the novel was always part of the writing concept the whole time you knew you're gonna have that as a companion or was it the other way around we kind of thought of it during the pandemic because during yeah. the pandemic uh, very sadly uh, uh the uh human manager for guar uh who was also the human manager for clutch by the way nice uh, uh, he died right at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so we made a switch uh, uh, to a, a new management company during that time. And uh, the company that we switched to is a company that is kind of a, a bigger company and that has done a lot of stuff uh, it, and had worked with this comic company before. And that's, you know, so it really didn't come together until about the end of the first year of the pandemic. Oh, wow. Wow. So sound wise, it's funny. I I played the album for my wife, who's very much a pop country, Kings of Leon, Gaslight Anthem. That's her interest. I played it for her. She really liked it. So, well, uh, you know, it might be <laughs> I don't know. The best way to put it is it, it's it's more approachable for you guys. It's an approachable album. Was that was that a goal? Like as far as the writing process or? I mean, look, I love Odorous Urungus. Odorous Urungus is a, was a very, very, uh, he's one of the best and un most underrated frontmen 
in rock and roll history, in my opinion. I mean, you know, you've got a guy up there who's every bit as funny and talented and trained in the arts of entertainment as Diamond Dave, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but Odorous uh, had a lot to say and his voice was very polarizing. Um, so it's not that difficult. It, it, part of the project was to create some distance between what Odorous did and what the band and what Guar did with Odorous as the front man and what the band does now. And one of the easiest ways to do that was just to say, look, we're going to have less lyrics, right? Like, like, don't, you know, give the music some room, um, focus more on hooks. Odorous would, <laughs> Odorous would throw a hook under the bus for a laugh any day of the week. And I'm glad he did. I think it was awesome and brilliant. Um, but uh, when you don't do that, I think things just kind of automatically become a little more approachable. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our goal was really to just do things differently, but uh, as it turns out, yeah, I mean, the end effect of that is that it's it's more approachable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But I mean, there, there's something for everyone. I mean, I listen to it. I'm like, all right, well, that sounds, you know, power metal, and this sounds, um, you know, riffy, and your vocals are on point, and uh, yeah, I guess you you passed my wife's test of, uh, you know, she dug it. So you're doing something well, right. Cause no one I'm, passes that test. Yeah. I mean, you, <laughs> if I can pass the test of a wife, any wife, then I think I'm doing good. Yeah. That's a sniff test that you want to pass. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> oh man. I'm Please. glad he likes it though. I mean, uh, and you know, uh, people have been asking us uh, a lot about this, I mean, Guar is a band that <laughs> we neither reap the benefits or the rewards of adhering to genre. You know, b mm. people people like to think that they have eclectic taste. They don't. They want the same thing again and again, mm -hmm. uh, and they want the same thing from their bands. I mean, it's it's insane. Like, they, they, I think they perceive it almost. It's like consistency in a restaurant, right? Uh, they don't. They, you know. Or, or watching an episode of Law and Order SVU, the same shit happens every time, and that's mm -hmm. ultimately people want that, and it's rewarded in this industry. And I think that's one of the reason, one of the reasons why there's so much shit out there that just sucks is because people are trying to adhere to genre, um, and Guard just, you know, I mean, we've we've never been interested in that, like not at any stage of our development. I mean, there were certainly some metal years where the band did that, uh, you know, starting maybe with violence has arrived and really picking up uh, on the next sort of three albums after that. But even then, I mean, there was a lot of variety on those records uh, mm -hmm. compared to most sort of thrash metal or, uh, you know, metal, metal associated bands. Right. And like, you're going to do it for as long as Guar's done it. You can't do the same thing every <laughs> record. It, you have to do something different. You must get bored, right? I mean, I mean <laughs> either that or you got to make the money ACDC does. And then right, true, right. right. Yeah. It's one or the <laughs> other. Why should we break this thing that's fixed, right? Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just want to stuff my nose with cocaine and sit on a beach in a man bikini. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 